You got the camera set up? Yeah. Do we need a mic check? We're good? Yeah, we're good. All right, well, uh, let's record this before they change their minds and make us leave. Hello, everyone. As you can see, this message is coming to you from inside Islam's holiest site, the Kaaba. For nearly 14 centuries, non-Muslims haven't been allowed to visit the Kaaba, thanks to Surah 9, verse 28 of the Quran, which says that idolaters cannot approach the sacred mosque because they're najasun, filthy, unclean, impure. Two verses later, the Quran puts Christians and Jews into the idolater category, so we're unclean too. In fact, in Surah 98, verse 6, the Quran calls Christians, Jews, and other non-Muslims the worst of creatures. We're so repulsive, according to Islam, that we can't even enter the city of Mecca until today. When I got to Mecca just a few hours ago, I said to the guards, hey guys, politicians and the media keep telling us that Islam's a religion of equality and tolerance. And as everyone knows, saying something over and over again makes it true. So how about showing the world you don't really hate non-Muslims by maybe letting just one of us somewhere inside your country's capital? Long story short, their hearts melted with compassion I got a golden ticket. Since I'm here, I thought it might be nice to share a message with all my Muslim friends. I've got some good news and some bad news. Let me start with the bad news. The bad news is that if you're a sincere Muslim, you've been bowing down five times a day to a pagan temple that Muhammad strong-armed from the polytheists of Mecca. The Kaaba used to be surrounded by 360 pagan idols. When Muhammad conquered Mecca, he smashed the little idols but he kept the big idol, this cubical idolatry factory that, that serves as the focal point of Islamic worship. I find this ironic because unlike so many other people in the world, you Muslims understand that God created us and that because God is the ultimate source and sustainer of all that exists, we have certain obligations. One of which is not bowing down to stolen pagan temples. Think about it. Of all the different ways you could worship, you worship by bowing down to this building. Why is that? Because Muhammad told you to. And who, may I ask, is Muhammad? He's a guy who had sex with a nine-year-old girl, married the wife of his own adopted son, married more women than his own revelations allowed, and got in trouble with his wives for having sex with his slave girl. According to Muslim sources, Muhammad's first impression of his revelations was that they were demonic. According to Muslim sources, Muhammad tried repeatedly to commit suicide. According to Muslim sources, Muhammad delivered revelations that promoted polytheism. And he blamed the devil for tricking him. According to Muslim sources, Muhammad was a victim of black magic, a spell that gave him delusional thoughts and false beliefs. Muhammad supported his religion by robbing people. He tortured a man for money. He assassinated people for making fun of him. He beheaded hundreds of Jews for trying to defend themselves. He allowed his followers to beat their wives into submission and to hire prostitutes and to rape their female captives. In other words, Muhammad is the last person anyone should ever listen to about anything. And yet, you Muslims unquestioningly do whatever he says. Not surprisingly, since Muhammad's pagan ancestors and tribe were obsessed with the Kaaba, he's got you convinced that the Lord of all creation is obsessed with you bowing down to this building and taking trips to this building and walking circles around this building and kissing the black rock embedded in this building. My friends, false prophets don't come to you saying, hey, let's commit a bunch of idolatry. They come to you saying, hey, Let's bow down to that thing over there. But it's not idolatry when we do it. Now, when I point this out to Muslims, you usually respond, well, the Jews bow down to the temple in Jerusalem, and we're just doing something similar. Wrong. The Jews bowed down to the presence of God within the Jerusalem temple. They weren't bowing down to the building. They were bowing down to the Almighty Himself who descended and filled the temple. That's not what Islam teaches about the Kaaba. You don't believe that the Spirit of Allah descends and fills this place. You're just bowing down to a building. And that, my friends, means that you are drowning in a pool of idolatry. If you think God's going to ignore your idolatry, you must have a pretty low view of God. God is perfect. And since he's perfect, he's perfect in his attributes. 
God is perfect in holiness and righteousness and justice, which means that he must punish all sin. What do you think you deserve for repeatedly insulting God by bowing down to a pagan temple? It doesn't matter what you think. It matters what God thinks. You've sinned and God punishes sin. That, my friends, is the bad news. Now for the good news. The God who is perfect in his attributes is also perfect in love because he exists eternally as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. God is love and he will do whatever it takes to save his children. What would you do to save your children? If you were walking down the street dressed in your best clothes and you saw your child drowning in a pool of mud, wouldn't you dive right into that mud to save the child you love? Would you care about your clothes? No, all that would matter is your child. If that's how great your love is, how much greater do you think God's love is? Enough to enter creation and accept the punishment that his children deserve? That's the God I proclaim to you. In John 6, 38, Jesus, the divine Son of God, tells his followers that he came down from heaven. Why would he come down from heaven? Where was Jesus going? Bethlehem, the cross, the tomb, those were all just stopping places. Jesus had a particular destination in mind when he left heaven. He talks about it in the last two verses of John 17, where he says to the Father, Righteous Father, though the world does not know you, I know you, and they know that you have sent me. I have made you known to them and will continue to make you known in order that the love you have for me may be in them and that I myself may be in them. And that I myself may be in them. In who? In us, his followers. In 1 Corinthians 6, 19, the Apostle Paul says to Christians, do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you? We were Jesus' destination when he left heaven. Jesus died on the cross to cleanse new temples for God's glory. You Muslims bow down every day to an empty, lifeless pagan temple. If you want to bow down to a temple where the presence of God dwells in a special way, you should be bowing down facing a Christian. I know that bowing down facing a Christian sounds awful to you, but you're doing something far, far worse when you bow down to these stones. So you'd be better off bowing down to the presence of God within a Christian than you are doing what you're doing now. But you don't want to bow down facing me, and you're right, you shouldn't. You don't have to bow down to me or this building or anything else in this world. You can be the temple of the living God, worshiping God in spirit and in truth, if you believe in Jesus and what he's done. As the Gospel says, God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. We've all sinned against the Almighty, my friends, and we deserve judgment. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Now you tell me which message comes from God. According to Islam, Allah wants you to schedule your day around bowing to a pagan temple, mindlessly reciting words in a language most of you don't even understand. This message was delivered to you by the most obvious false prophet in history, a man whose body remains in the grave to this day. According to the Gospel, God transforms those who believe in him so that we can be the walking, talking, living, breathing, loving, preaching temples of his Holy Spirit. This message was delivered to you by a man who lived the most miraculous life in history, a man whose grave remains empty because death could not hold him. You know which of these messages is from God. And it's obvious by now that the purpose of Islam is to keep you distracted from the gospel, to keep you from being the temple of God's spirit. In the past, God put up with this ignorance but now he commands you to turn away from these lifeless things and towards him, the living God. I certainly hope you don't reject God's offer. But if you do decide 
to suppress the truth. If you choose to continue bowing down to these pagan stones, then I have a simple request. Whenever you bow down to this building, I want you to remember me in it. From now on, every time you recite those empty, useless words, think about the presence of God within me, inside your temple, so that your prostrations will have something to do with the presence of God. Please don't forget. God bless you, man.